In the past four years, the Game Theory channel has spearheaded a discussion about the hidden lore of Minecraft. Maybe. I don't actually know. I have no evidence for that, but it was the first channel I saw to talk about it, and I'm sure it's not the only one. Uh, but that will not stop me from making that claim. While the theorist channels speak of the natural disasters caused by the ancient builders and subreddits discuss what of this is true, and what the world was like before the Minecraft Legends game happened, I'm here to expose the truth about the Minecraft villager and their dark history of being exploited. First off, what are my credentials for talking about any of this? Absolutely none. In fact, I have not played Minecraft Legends or Dungeons, meaning I cannot really reference them. I have also never read the Minecraft Bestiary, because I refuse to pay for books to understand the lore of games. That's stupid. Stop it. Please. I'm begging. In like five years, I swear, we are gonna have a whole retelling of the Bible, but it's poppy playtime and will cost $50. But I do have an associate's degree in liberal arts from a college, and I'm projected to have a bachelor's in history at the end of the year. Don't ask why I'm graduating in the middle of a school year, it's not important. Also, it's none of your business. Lay off, weirdo. There are two things about Minecraft villagers that mainstream Minecraftologists yeah, sure, let's go with that. Will not tell you. Minecraft dungeons and jungle temples are strange. I agree with the game theory that the majority of structures we see around the Minecraft world are likely from the ancient builder civilization. However, the jungle temples and dungeons are the only non-villager or non-illager structures that make use of cobblestone. This is a strange coincidence, but does not really mean anything. It can be easily chalked up to them both being legacy structures, which are implemented long before most of the other structures we see in the Minecraft world were ever implemented. And that's very true! However, consider that villagers have a jungle variant. That's right, there exists a villager cultural group which is not naturally occurring. Judging that these cultural garbs spawn from when a villager is born, it would not make much sense that this is a new group. Rather, I think this suggests that villagers once had homes in the jungle, but for whatever reason no longer do. I'ma be honest, it would be kinda strange to walk into a jungle and suddenly just create an entirely new cultural variant. It's certainly possible that this is what's happening, but since there's little evidence for it either way, I'm going to choose the option which best fits my narrative. So what we have is three structures, dungeons, jungle, temples, and villages, and woodland mansions. Um, they also use cobblestone, uh, but that kind of strengthens my point and I forgot about them when I'm writing the script, so I'm not going to mention them, but I'm where they exist. And since illagers were kind of shown to be once part of villagers, uh, you can also count them as part of an ancient villager civilization. That all share a specific material, cobblestone. We know that villagers have or have had the ability to live in jungles and near jungle temples. Now, the only way one would really be able to link these things historically was to prove they predate the ancient builder structures. Which I think they might. We may be able to find evidence of this in the mine shafts likely built by the ancient builders. The mine shafts are important because of the cave spider spawners within them and the rail system. These features are important because they appear to be the same type of technology found in jungle temples and dungeons. Jungle temples have traps and locking mechanisms using redstone and dungeons have mob spawners within them. However, when found in mine shafts, these technological marvels seem fairly rudimentary. The rails seem to be the only instance of redstone engineering within any of the mine shafts. Not even redstone torches can be found in them, meaning that while they did have access to things like powered rails, whether or not they could actually use them remains unclear. It's possible that decay and robbery has taken its toll, but judging by the fact that regular torches have survived and far more valuable loot remains in the mine shafts untouched, 
uh, this being an explanation for the lack of other redstone seems unlikely. Likewise, the spawners found in mineshafts do not produce the mobs found in dungeons. Instead, they spawn in cave spiders. Unique to these spawners, in all of Minecraft, they don't spawn naturally, and openly hostile to ancient builders. Assuming, of course, Steve is the same species as ancient builders. This uniqueness would make sense as the ancient builders have been shown to be interested in building new things. While it seems they were able to recreate these spawners with the spiders, judging that we do not see this technology anywhere else, and we don't see repeats of the mob spawners, it seems that they could not fully recreate the mob spawners, but rather imitate them with a new creation. It seems that despite the ancient builders leap in certain technological areas and architectural development, they were unable to ever fully recreate technologies found in dungeons and jungle temples. This may have not convinced you, and fair enough. Without written records, timelines of what was built by who and when can become quickly unclear. Furthermore, we don't have the ability to even approximately date any of these buildings accurately. My final piece of evidence for an ancient villager civilization lies in the swamp. Like the jungle, there are no naturally spawning villages in the swamp biome, yet there exist swamp garbs for villagers. Furthermore, unlike the villagers, the swamp is not actually uninhabited. The witch, who the Minecraft wiki states is neither villager nor illager, can be found here. And notice that witches live in the witch hut which is only one of two structures where a cat can spawn them. But what's stranger is that the witches are not naturally hostile to villagers and share many similarities with the wandering trader. Both tend to stay out of popular society, both show a tendency for isolation, and both make use of potions as their primary means of defense. I don't think it's that far of a stretch to say that at one time, evokers, illusionaries, wandering traders, clerical villagers, and witches studied together in perhaps the making of potions out there in the swamp. But after the fall of the once great villager civilization and the eventual split between the villagers and illagers, all that remained was the witches. Judging by this scene in Minecraft Legends, credit to game theory, again, I have never played this game, it seems that villagers do know how to use tools, but for whatever reason, don't anymore. I put forward the idea that villagers once had a grand civilization with sophisticated knowledge of redstone and even access to mob spawners. However, they were limited, and the raw materials they had access to were not as sophisticated as the, la as the later ancient builders had. As for the mob spawners, why would the ancient builders not make more use of this powerful tool unless they could only imitate it? At some point, Something akin to the Stone Age collapse must have happened to this older civilization which resulted in the isolated towns we see in the games, with only the witch and the wandering trader keeping alive the ancient practices that once saw the villagers ruling the Minecraft world. <laughs> villagers defend themselves? This isn't a trick question, just really think about it. They do not build walls or defensive structures as one may expect, rather they use iron golems. Now this is interesting because iron golems only ever seem to attack dangers to villagers. While this is not totally true, spiders, skeletons, and endermen all induce immense violence in golems, but some very destructive mobs such as the creeper do not induce any anger in them at all. But it is important to note that iron golems do seem to be specifically protecting villagers and villages. Endermen can take blocks away from the village, spiders are naturally hostile, and while they show no signs of aggression towards villagers, they could be perceived as a danger, and skeletons are well known to fire aimlessly at their opponents, which may inadvertently harm a villager or the golem itself. But for mobs like the creeper, which would only explode if attacked, they are left alone as they serve no danger to villages or villagers when left alone. Why does this matter? Well, I think it implies that the iron golems are specifically designed to protect villagers and no one else. Heck, even Steve can be attacked by iron golems if he hurts a villager. Now, it may make a lot of sense, like of course they're designed to protect villagers, that's where they live. But consider this. Cats. Hear me out, I'm going somewhere with this. In human civilization, cats started their journey into pethood with the agricultural revolution. 
You see, once you start growing a large amount of crops, you attract critters and rodents. Once you're storing your surplus crops, even more critters and rodents. What do cats eat? Kibble! Oh, and you like rodents. So, while cats would be attracted to these new stores of crops and humans recognizing their use wouldn't bother them. Then people realized that cats are actually really cute and just little babies and started giving them little treats. Cats, upon realizing that cuteness was way more effective at getting humans to protect them, started to manipulate us into taking care of them. What does this have to do with Minecraft, one may ask? Well, it kinda seems like these factors are not exactly a prominent in the Minecraft world. Yes, there are farms, but honestly they never seem to really be particularly big, and there are stores of food, however the world of Minecraft is also pretty much devoid of critters and rodents. Hence why cats only really seem to react to fish. And the fact that they only react to fishes is also strange. While there are fishing villagers, they are not in all villages and never tame cats. Furthermore, cats can be used to fend off phantoms and creepers. While iron golems do attack phantoms, phantoms do not attack villagers, nor do they spawn anywhere but around Steve's species. Creepers and phantoms only really possess real threats to Steve and his species. I would argue that iron golems are specifically protectors of villages from outside threats, including ancient builders, which again, I presume to be the same species as Steve, but ancient builders also required some sort of protection from creepers and phantoms. And instead of building walls, which could be used against them, they introduce cats into the villages to protect themselves from such enemies while still having easy access to villagers. Otherwise, I don't really see reason why cats are in these villages or why iron golems are so specific in the mobs they ignore. Meaning, of course, that I don't think iron golems were ancient builders' inventions to protect villagers. Hey, have you ever questioned desert or snow villages? No, seriously, why are they here? It's not like towns in the middle of the desert exist. They tend to be around oases or rivers or some other form of water or geographic feature which makes a town worthwhile to be there. And when you do find people who are literal desert dwellers, they tend to be rather nomadic. In Arctic climates, people tend to live off of fish and game and also can tend to be nomadic. But fishermen in villages are not numerous nor consistent, and no one shows any form of actual game hunting. So why are villagers in these places? It implies some capacity of a centralized power, which could provide for them, or at the very least start up the villages. I would argue they would likely need consistent provisions and only survive on the meager crops they manage to harvest in climates clearly not suited for them. But why would they be put here? Why would villagers wander off into the desert or arctic to grow crops they should know won't grow well there and establish villages without having the material or specialization that would allow them to thrive there. I think the ancient builders were performing experiments on the villagers. My evidence? Igloos. Yeah, no, that's, that's literally it. Seriously, there are structures with villagers and zombie villagers locked in the basement, which are set up to clearly be a laboratory designed to cure zombie villagers. These villages are here so someone could take villagers out and experiment on them without ever raising suspicion. And since these isolated villages seem to serve no real purpose, I mean, heck, even the biome with literal gold mines does not even produce villages, the main conclusion I come to is that these villages were created and artificially supported for this very purpose. I know there's no actual signs of uh, experiments in the desert, but igloos only spawn in snow biomes. The only time we see this type of experimentation is specifically in a biome where a villager's town would be heavily, heavily isolated. And where likely deaths due to natural events would not be uncommon. Which likely means that for an extended period of time, villagers were ruled or influenced by some group outside of their own. Under their rule, cats would likely be cultivated in villages to protect against creatures that golems ignored or were mostly incapable of fighting off. And villages were cultivated in areas that a decentralized and uninterconnected cultural or national group, as we see today with villagers, could not sustain. 
In these remote locations, it is likely that an outside group, likely the ancient builders, were using them as abductees and experiments, as demonstrated by the igloos. Although, to be fair, it is possible that these villages did come to fruition underneath the ancient villager civilization. And if that's true, it still shows that the ancient builders were taking advantage of that and, you know, abducting them for their experiments. Listen, I've seen what people do to villagers in Minecraft. Right, it's not pretty. We don't treat them like human beings, alright? And I don't think the ancient builders were either. Ever since I first started playing Minecraft, I always considered it to be a bit of an apocalyptic game. Not that it ever really tried to portray itself as such, but I just found it to be a very lonely game in single player. What evidence of other creative presences there are tend to be small and mysterious, like a village. Which, you know, is mysterious because who are we to think built these? In gameplay, villagers never actually build anything, so it's kind of strange that they have those entire villages, but we see no evidence of them building. Uh, again, this is just kind of whack in the difference between gameplay and lore, and the fact that Minecraft uh, was clearly not designed with lore. Or the other examples tend to be old or broken down, as you can see with jungle temples, pyramids, or shipwrecks. Through most of Minecraft's history, finding any evidence of someone else affecting the world was very sparse. As Microsoft has added more and more structures and even blocks and decorative items in nature, Minecraft begins to feel a bit overcrowded. Where once villages used to be rare and valuable finds, which you would have to spend sometimes, you know, maybe not hours, but certainly uh, tens of minutes you know, traveling and looking around for some. Uh, but nowadays, it seems rare to not find a village close by spawn. And even if you do manage to get unlucky enough to not be around one, it's really easy to transport villagers around now. Where once a loot chest was a massively helpful find, well, maybe not massively helpful, but definitely felt rare, valuable, and contained stuff you may not get anywhere else, or find again for maybe even hours of gameplay, I feel like you can now find several loot chests within just a few minutes of exploration. It's not that I think these new structures are bad, or that they should be removed in any way, but I do think that these structures' spawn rates should be lowered to return to a more apocalyptic feel of earlier versions. Or maybe that's just my nostalgia talking. I don't really hate the way Minecraft is now, but it can feel overcrowded. Which is not always a bad thing, but, you know, my nostalgia does feel that maybe we should be thinking about returning to this more apocalyptic feel of Minecraft. Now I'm mumbling, and I'm screaming, and I don't know. I'm gonna be so real, I don't know why I made this video or what the point of it is. I initially wrote and recorded a completely different video but then felt it was bad and stupid so I scrapped it and now here we are. I guess I hope all of you enjoyed my arguments that the villagers were essentially a conquered people who had no real autonomy after a while, um, and that they used to be a great civilization brought to its knees. Anyways, go touch grass.